Hey everybody, it's Luna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming at you to talk about September of 2024. Um, and always thanks to the guys at the Know Thyself podcast, I appreciate you. Um, okay, so I know people like to know about, you know, Mercury retrograde stuff. And Mercury did go direct at the end of August, um, but some people like to know when it catches up with itself. So it retrograded at four degrees of... Virgo back in early August, went back into Leo and went direct at um, 21 Leo. Now it's going forward. Here we are in September. So it's going to pass that four degrees of Virgo on September 12th. So some people like to know we're completely out of the window, you know, of the retrograde, which doesn't mean it might mean it means some things to other people, but I mean, it's not that important, but it can help you feel like you're really able to um, move ahead on the things that you worked out during Mercury retrograde. If it's new commitments to yourself, um, you know, meditation and things like that. Because um, Mercury retrograde is good for looking within, deciding certain things, getting back to your true beliefs about things and goals. And then as it moves direct, implementing those things and, and actually doing them, you know. So it's a good time to be doing that. And one of the things that was hard with this Mercury retrograde was as it was going backwards in Leo, and, you know, Mercury goes pretty slow during the retrograde, it was squaring Uranus like most of the time or within range of a square to Uranus. And... Like Uranus is like the higher octave of Mercury. Like Mercury's our thinking. Like, you know, Mercury is like facts that you know, but Uranus would be Google, knowing everything, you know? But when Uranus squares Mercury, it can be like overload of the mind. So a lot of people were telling me they were having a really hard time sleeping. And for now, um, Mercury to go back into Virgo and start moving away from that mathematical square to Uranus. So even though it's in Taurus and Leo would square Taurus, it's at the end of Taurus. So we need Mercury to go into Virgo and a few degrees to get out of that mathematical range. So we're just getting into that this first week of September of like, oh, you know, it's not so high strung or just edgy, uh, restless, a little frantic, you know, you can feel like you're not accomplishing things even when you're doing stuff, you know, so ah, that'll be better that Mercury is on its way in new territory and getting out of the whole Uranus blah, 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 thing. So um, another thing to talk about is Mars is went into Cancer. I think it was the like the 4th of September. I'm doing this on the 7th. Sorry, it's a little late. It's going to be short too. Um, but Mars will retrograde in Cancer. All the planets go retrograde except the sun and the moon. But Mars is retrograde the least often of any planet, I think, when you add it all together. Um, but what this would mean is, so Mars is actually going to go through the sign of Cancer, go into early Leo, and then back into Cancer, and stay there for quite a while. So really, it'd be interesting to look at, if you know your chart, where the sign of Cancer is. Um, in the houses. Sometimes it would straddle two houses, you know, but to look at that and say, what areas will Mars go backwards over? Because it's going to spend most of the time in Cancer, not in Leo when it does the retrograde. And so Mars is about goals and, you know, Cancer itself is about um, eating habits, self-care, uh, family, your home, um, and there's something about it that's like what makes you feel safe and what makes you feel like steady. Also, the moon can be things that you've inherited from family and that could be, you know, mental, emotional, physical patterns, even, you know, genetic patterns or whatever. Um, and Mars is about individuality. So it's kind of interesting. On one level, we could say Mars is also about goals. So I'm going to, you know, have new goals about my home. Oh, I forgot personal finances also with the sign of cancer. So it's like setting goals around, you know, seeing what you would really want, how it can be attained. And one good thing about the sign of cancer is it's 
like, it doesn't have to be so much slow, but it's the idea of a rhythm of moving forward. Like, you know, the full moon, the new moon, the full moon again, the high tide, the low tide, the high tide. We're saying about this rhythm that's consistent and Mars is about going. So it can be about a ritual and continuing with that and maybe not have like super fast progress like it's in Aries, but it's this rhythm of getting into like some sort of routine that helps you move ahead financially, um, work with your, your health, with your um, reactionariness emotionally about things, um, healing with family, stuff like that. So Mars can be about making actions in those levels. Um, also though, it's about, can be about breaking patterns and the boldness to break patterns. Because I guess if you're setting a new pattern, you wanna break an old pattern, probably right? So Mars is bold enough to say, let's look at this and say, what isn't good about my eating habits, the way I take care of myself, the way I interact with my family, and what isn't getting me what I want, and figuring out a way that does. So Mars will not, did I say this? Mars doesn't go fully out of the sign of cancer till mid-April. So, and again, I'll talk about this over the next few months because it won't actually do the retrograde until early December. Um, but it's the idea that it's gonna be at that contained part of your chart because normally Mars will just fly through, let's a house or a sign in six or eight weeks. So the idea that it's gonna be in that same sign more or less from September through mid-April is like, whoa. So it's saying this concentrated part of your chart. And if you want to say it's going to retrograde at six degrees of Leo. So if you want to say, okay, you know, where's the sign of cancer in six degrees of Leo? And so what's this, what's this all about here? And it can be also, of course, making angles to planets in your chart. And this is more advanced astrology stuff, but some people like to look at their chart and say, oh, it's going to be in my 10th house. It's going to be affecting work and things like that, or it's going to be in my seventh house about my relationship or something and kind of see where you need to assert yourself or have more of a, a sense of focus for about, what is that, six, seven months, you know? So, so Mars moves into that sign, it is in there now. So just fun to kind of get a, a jump on that with the Mars retrograde and say, because Mars, when planets go retrograde, it's like, hmm, it's like a deeper vision of that sign, you know? Um, so good to start thinking about it now. We're going to have a partial eclipse at the full moon, which will be on the 18th. Um, and when that happens, um, it's going to be at 25 Virgo. So then the moon is at 25 Pisces. And also Neptune is in the later degrees of Pisces. So it's an interesting time because you want to make sure with that full moon that you're not jumping to conclusions about things because full moons can be kind of edgy, right? Um, and Neptune is things you kind of imagine or that aren't clear. It's great for meditation and imag like, I don't want to say imagining things, but opening your mind, um, thinking on like a whole big picture. Um, so that's good but when you're in a, an emotional reaction you might like misunderstand somebody or put something onto something that isn't there so just kind of being aware of that so you want to um before you make a big statement the neptune is like am i really seeing this you know like a mirage or something um but also on that level it can be about forgiveness with neptune and seeing things in a softer way than you had previously um and being able to draw a conclusion to, because the full moon's about endings, about a situation that you could like heal with more kindness could be part of the Neptune. You know, but more often it can be this reactionary stuff that's only like a few days, right? Around the 18th of September. But um, the good thing too is that Uranus and Pluto will be trining the sun and they, they're both sextiling the moon, which is a 60 degree angle. So those more positive angles from Uranus and Pluto are like when you are pretty clear about what's going on, Uranus is creativity, Pluto is the sort of fortitude. And so there's a lot of insights that can come at that time. So especially if you're doing meditation or dream work or art, all those kind of 
Neptune and spiritual type things, it can be really a rich time. Because if you have a outlet for that Neptune, like Uranus, the creativity and Pluto is that, um, again, that self-commitment. It's really great for breakthroughs spiritually, personally, and then of course we're going to do creatively. Um, so let me see if there's anything else I want to bring up because I always feel bad when I can't do it the first of the month and I feel like I'm late and then I make it shorter. Um, okay, so I think that's pretty good there. Oh, I'm in January for some reason. Okay, <laughs> I turned it to look at the Mars movement. Okay, so yeah, pretty good there. Um, I'll talk about it next month, but Jupiter is also slowing down to go retrograde. We'll do that in the first few days of October, so we might feel some of that at the end of September. And that's I like Jupiter retrograde because, especially because Jupiter is in Gemini, which is about thinking about stuff, thinking about stuff. Jupiter is about this kind of whole philosophy of things, and sometimes when Jupiter is in Gemini, <clears throat> it can be a lot of talking and not taking action. So the retrograde says, let me actually um, walk the talk about my spiritual philosophies. Um, it can be a time when you get into more actual meditation or going to those yoga classes you said you're going to go to. And it can be kind of a sweet time when Jupiter is slowing down like that, where it's, um, it's kind of like... Um, digesting everything you've been reading or learning about and really integrating words into your daily life and again living the philosophies living the concepts and trying these things out so that's also kind of nice but when we're talking about the jupiter retrograde in october so okay so let me know if you'd like to have a session you could find me um on my website alunamichaels.com or you could call or text at 248 Five eight three one six six three. So uh, sometimes I don't see the comments on YouTube. I don't know why, but um, well, bye for now, and hope you have a great month.